uh, we can talk to Hugh Hewitt, uh, who is with us from where are they? Oh, wow, you've uh, you've overtaken Idiots. Lafayette Park across from the White House, clearly. <laughs> um, Hugh, welcome to the broadcast. It is boisterous. I hope you're up to it. Uh, and and I'll, I'll start with a dual question: Your opinion of the speech as delivered, the, this debate about uh, teleprompter versus ad lib Trump, uh, and your opinion of the content of the speech. Well, I never thought I would be saying this, so I want to pause and make sure I get it right. I agree with Rachel Maddow and James Carville. I'm uh, very is, sorry, Hugh. I'm it, sorry. It is, it is, <laughs> That's all the time we have. Good night. Under, <laughs> it you was just an broke underwhelming Twitter. <laughs> performance. His, his challenge tonight was to drain the toxicity. I want to go back to Nicole Wallace's comments at the beginning of the program tonight. He's entered into the most toxic region in America. Uh, he's gotten race wrong three times with his down the Trump Tower speech on Mexican illegal immigrants being rapists with the David Duke KKK comment and then with the worst 72 hours of his campaign and over the last three days. In this speech, he wasn't just tin eared, it was cobalt eared at the end when he said, we will take care of our African Americans. And I, I actually cringed when I heard that. There was a great three lines in there about uh, Secretary Clinton's foreign policy failures, but I was at the end of this saying, Paul Ryan is still thinking about that daily news cover today that said, I'm with racist, perhaps the most bludgeoning cover I've seen since the drop dead cover for Gerald Ford. I don't think he did anything to stop the panic. I'm with James Carville. I think a lot of people are, are still looking at the plane is headed towards the mountain. This could be 2006 again. You know, the inflection point today, Brian, I think is up till today, or, or actually the last 24 to 48 hours, people were thinking, we might lose the Senate, but he might win. He names a good vice president, good sec staff, good sec state. He could pull this out. And then they began to realize over the last 24 hours, he could lose the House, the Senate, governorships, state legislatures. It's a, it's a panic mode. And that speech, because of the reasons Rachel articulated, did not take it away. So, Hugh, what do you do? What does that mean? You've got, you can see on radar the plane headed to the mountain, in your <laughs> words. What does it mean? New pilots. I get, you get a vice president, you get a secretary of defense, you get a secretary of state. You surround yourselves with a team because one thing that Carville said, James said this uh, two hours ago, there is no campaign. There isn't, they had to bring Chris Christie across the river. They had to rush in reinforcements. I assume that uh, Donald Jr., Eric, and Ivanka were involved as well. There isn't any structure there. There isn't depth. And, and the writing in the speech, you know, Chris Matthews, the former ghostwriter, so am I. It was just pedestrian. And there, tell, tell me what we take away from that other than the cringeworthy moments and the fact that he didn't insult anybody. And he got PPP wrong when it was shouted out to him, TPP, he said PPP. And I just, you know, I think every Republican who's on the ballot across the country is wondering, do I get my resume better? Do I start calling around and finding a job? PPP, you know me. Did anybody else think that when that happened? Yeah. 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 Sorry. He's down with PPP. So what do you, to, to the Maddow brief, what do you do to, to get the essence of the ad lib Trump with uh, an eye toward controlling the material and the outbursts and avoid the teleprompter scripted Trump, Hugh? Murder boards. Uh, Donald Trump was very good in debates. He ought to be doing more murder boards where appellate lawyers go in, and Ben Ginsburg can tell you about this. They just practice and practice and practice, and people call you out when you, when you throw off a completely tenured response. And you get some briefing books, and you learn something beyond, uh, we're going to get great deals. You, you start to engage on the issue. When he ran through Egypt, Libya, the Russian reset button, Syria, status of forces agreement server, that should have been the speech. I don't know if anyone had the capacity to write that at Trump Tower today, but that should have been the speech. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.